Yeah, there's there's a few, if you just see if anybody wants this for their phone games or whatever. Anyways, so very brief background. Um, with respect to the development of the Pines, it was originally approved in 1999. It was amended in 2002 uh, to, uh, for 69 uh, dwelling units. Um, it was approved as a planned unit development at that time, which is what we're what we today call cluster development. 69 units, and that's the way it was until 2008-2009, when um, uh, the the uh, corporation had acquired the adjacent roughly 11 acres of land, um, 11 or 12 acres of land, uh, and decided and had some other desires with respect to the existing development and they uh, came in with a, an amendment to that subdivision. Um, and uh, the phase one that you approved, the final approval to, uh, shifted, s shifted the style and location of a few of the units in the poplar Longwood uh, areas of the development and with a net addition of six units. And uh, the plan also called for this extension of Chestnut Court <coughs> and the addition of 12 units uh, along that extension in the cul-de-sac to where it would end. Um, so that would bring the grand total to 87 units. You'll see now that they've subtracted one unit from that, so now be 86. Uh, the Dilga Pines Inn is on its own, on its own separate lot, and. Um, um, and so together there's about 66, 67 acres of land. Uh, when they came in um, for the amendment, that was all under a um, set of provisions that are fall under our cluster development standards or cluster development ordinance. And part of the requirement of cluster development is that there be permanent open space set aside. And there's a certain ratio of open space that's got to be included. Uh, they exceeded that, actually, that, that uh, ratio. The 30% has got to be set aside. They actually set aside about 40%. And all of that, in this case, was set aside as part of phase one. So you know, almost all of the Chestnut Court extension and the homes are surrounded by permanently protected open space. This is open space that's permanently protected. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, recorded the Registry of Deeds. There's an open space agreement uh, with the town uh, by which uh, that space is maintained and the uses of it are very limited and you can't develop it. So um, that's, that's all in place. Um, the review procedure is, uh, is that a cluster development is a type of a subdivision that has to meet some special standards. It allows more units to be built than might otherwise have been allowed if it weren't clustered. But in return, this open space has to be set aside. There are certain design guidelines that have to be met. There are certain buffer area requirements uh, that have to be met. And those are all laid out in the cluster ordinance. Um, Within a cluster development, you, there are three kinds of residential structures that can be built. It can be single family detached. It can be single family attached. That is two single family looking homes that are attached, often by a garage or by garages, uh, or it could be a two family dwelling. Uh, you cannot have multifamily structures in this development um, uh, because it's a medium density residential district, which only allows the single and the two uh, family style units. Um, you found, as a planning board found at the preliminary plan stage, that this project, this expansion, um, met all the clustered uh, standards um, in terms of open space, density, setbacks, buffer areas, street design, and so forth. Um, Subdivision. So this is really a subdivision review. It's a, sub, it's a review of a particular kind of subdivision known as a cluster development. Um, but just to be clear, uh, what a subdivision review uh, does is it looks at how the land is being divided, either into lots or in this case into uh, 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 unit layouts. Um, and it looks at a wide variety of impacts, natural resource impacts, municipal impacts, uh, the kind of infrastructure that needs to be built, uh, erosion control, stormwater management, and those sorts of things. And then the final plan is recorded at the Registry of Deeds. And in this case, 
phase one final plan was signed by the planning board and recorded at the Register of Deeds. And you'll see, when you look at it, you'll see that it includes all the open space and uh, um, all the things that were put into phase one. Um, the um, site plan review is concurrent with subdivision review. Uh, anything that disturbs a certain amount of land area has to also go through site plan review, and uh, this does. Um, but they're done concurrently because almost all the things that you look at site plan review are really part of the subdivision for a project like this. There are some details that are added, like locations of driveways and hydrants and, and things like that that are important, but they're all incorporated into one thing. So when you give approval uh, of, a, of a plan such as this, um, typically you're given those two uh, approvals concurrently. Um, so that's 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 the background. I, I should say that um, uh, because there were some questions raised about building design, there are not a lot of building design requirements or limitations um, in our ordinances. In cluster development, there are a few. Um, in that, uh, if you're going to do single-family attached units, they've got to look like single-family homes that have been you know that are closely spaced. Um, there's got to be a certain uh, <coughs> deeper setback of garages than the buildings themselves. The streets have to have a certain cross-section uh, that um, includes some landscaping along the streets. Uh, the roofs have to be pitched. Um, and the, the structures have to be at least 20 feet apart from each other. Um, those are the basic things. And a building elevation, architectural elevation, is one of the required submittals in the uh, in application so the planning board can see that those standards, whether those standards are being met. Um, the ordinance does not limit the number of stories that, that a structure would have. Um, you know, you could presume have a two or three story single family or duplex structure, um, but there's a height limit of 35 feet. So that is somewhat, um, somewhat limiting, but not, doesn't limit it to a single, a single story, single family home either. Um, in any case, what's been proposed by the applicant in this case are you know, what you see in the elevations very much like what is uh, on the ground now. And any change, significant change of that would require an amendment to the, to the plan. So that's the background, I think. And uh, if you have any questions or not, the, the key thing, first thing t for the planning board to decide is whether to uh, grant the uh, waiver on the three-year application deadline for the final plan of phase two and extend that time to basically tonight. Right. And my understanding was from your review that we did check with our town attorney as far as the Yes, the planning board has full authority to grant this uh, um, extension of time if it wishes. The, the extension of time has to be based on either a showing of hardship if the extension weren't required uh, or a showing of special circumstances as to why they didn't submit within that time and that it's, it would be acceptable to uh, extend that time. Um, I give you some uh, factors that you might want to weigh uh, in terms of deciding that question. Very good. Any questions for Adam? Okay, so that's, that's the first thing we have to decide today, yes? Um, I, I may have a potential conflict of interest <coughs> in that my husband is employed by EMHS. Mm -hmm. So I announced that. Okay. Uh, I guess how we've typically approached this is do you have any issues? Uh, Marshall, uh, does anybody on the board have any? I'm in the butter. You are in the butter. Yep. Okay. I'm going to pose the same question to you. Uh, I have no problems being objective. I'm going to ask the applicant. You've heard what they just mentioned. Uh, are there any issues with either board member? Standard member's? practice is to let the board decide that individual board members have a conflict. I don't really want that question. Very good. You're in. Thanks. All right. Any other questions for Evan? So we did get a, a letter from the applicant uh, talking about uh, again their request. Um, the request that you come up and uh, talk to us about this uh, the waiver request. 
So I'm going to ask uh, Paul Brody to come up and address some of the um, site plan subdivision uh, merits, the, the technical considerations. I wanted to address you on the question of the authority of the board under Section 18-82A of your ordinance. And you are? Yeah, um, and I should first introduce myself. Uh, my name is Andrew Hamilton. I'm an attorney with Eaton Peabody in Bangor. Um, I'm here representing Dearville Pines. I should introduce the most important folks here, uh, others. Uh, Joanne Grant is here. Hey, Joanne. You, you move towards the back. Um, uh, okay, the executive director of Dearville Pines. Um, Steve Crotty, who's the construction manager. Uh, for Dave Pines. Uh, Tom Doyle, who's uh, joined us this evening, is counsel for the two CPF entities that are part of your agenda, and you pronounced perfectly, um, Mr. Chairman. Um, John Kenny uh, uh, with WBRC, and Paul Brody with WBRC, and Paul's going to be up here in just a few minutes to talk with you if we get through this first question, as Evan laid it out for you. Um, so I want to just address the merits of the waiver request. Um, I think Evan summarized it uh, very well, so I'm not going to rehash a summary, instead take you into the, some of the details. And they're laid out in a letter of um, October 19, 2015, uh, from Miles Thiemann. Uh, Miles, you may remember, uh, for those of you who are on the board, was part of the applicant team that came forward in the fall of 2008 and um, secured approvals as part of a January 2009 approval. Um, those of you who um, had any investments, uh, whether directly or as part of uh, 401ks or retirement plans, know that November 2008 wasn't a very good time frame. Um, the market had, had just gone south. However, uh, WBRC and the applicant were in the midst of applications both with the state DEP and with the town of Orono uh, for the Chestnut Court expansion. They thought rather than shove uh, the process of review with this board, they would continue that process, and you granted preliminary approval in, in um, 2000, early 2009, and similarly DEP granted approval in January 2009. But we did have this fairly extensive period that went from November 2008, uh, several years out, um, and this really impeded the ability uh, to move forward with that. Um, uh, folks who have funds to uh, purchase uh, one of these wonderful cottages in a very strong uh, retirement community uh, weren't interested uh, in making that investment. Uh, they had other priorities in their household because their liquidity was reduced substantially by that event. So that affected the ability of durable plans to move forward. Um, so after that multi-year recession, um, we look to the opportunity to just get, uh, as Miles had shared with me, um, management and operation right uh, and make the, the units that were being managed at that time managed as well as they could be. But just within the last several months, uh, Deerville Pines identified and successfully negotiated the purchase of the Deerville Pines retirement community um, and the purchase to be proceed with Chicago Pacific founders. Um, as the buyer of the union and the retirement community, and there's two entities um, that uh, Mr. Ruck um, laid out as part of his introductory remarks, uh, and Tom can address questions that you have uh, for the uh, buyer of this facility. Uh, but both before the DEP and the town, uh, CPF has joined with Deer of Opines in pursuing approvals necessary to make transfers and to move forward with this final stage. As Paul will show you, there isn't a whole lot that's changed from your prior approval. Uh, this really is a matter of uh, market timing, um, and um, we, uh, we look forward to the opportunity to work with a, a company that has substantial resources uh, to move forward at the right time. We want to have the appropriate window to be able to do that. We'll talk about that later as well. So that is the request under uh, section 18207A. There is a time limit. Um, we think that uh, the letter from Mr. Thiemann does present special circumstances. Um, and um, I'm anxious to have Mr. Brody come to the podium, but it may be appropriate to have the board decide this first question first before we get to hear his great presentation as to whether you want to hear from him. We, we not only, only need to get before you tonight, we need to try to conclude tonight, uh, if that's at all possible. So thank you. Thank you. I hope everybody had a chance to, to read the letter. Uh, I understand the economic hardships 
Uh, my understanding was if, if we didn't approve a waiver request, they would go back to step one, sketch plan, and right, to repeat the everything that they had already done before. Correct. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on that? Comments? Yeah, I'll, I'll weigh in. I'm, I'm not in favor of extending in this particular circumstance. I, I sympathize with the applicant. I also sympathize with the, the members of the board. <coughs> what we're talking about is not a couple of months ago or half a year ago. It's six years ago. Mm -hmm. And you want to just back up to where we were six years ago and pick it back up and, and go forward. And that's, that's too long a time period as far as I'm <coughs> concerned. Mm -hmm. Others? Mr. Chairman, if I might address the, the merits at the right time. Well, I'd, I'd like to hear from the other board members before we have a response. Any other comments? We have some newer members of the board. You, you weren't involved with this this project, obviously, back then. So okay. they're all this. The, the extension is until January 1st, 2021. <coughs> Is no, this is a this is a, that would be this is a different request. <laughs> this is the, the extension would simply be to give them until now to file the final plan application. The five year extension is the time for construction of certain improvements. I, when I, I read this, the the hardships I, I do get that. Uh, what I, I guess my opinion was that, you know, not seeing significant changes to the plan, I wasn't sure of the, the merits that they would have to start from square one. When I, when I reviewed it, that was, that was my initial thought. But I, I would like to hear other comments as well. Mark, he presented a, a good point. Well, I guess I, I'm in favor of uh, going ahead with this uh, and, um, <coughs> because I'm not sure that the outcome would be any different if we started back at the beginning and it would save everybody's time if we can start from where we left off rather than starting over. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we got a couple of little corrections of a couple of uh, duplexes had turned into uh, individual homes, but that doesn't strike me as anything very significant. That was, that was my opinion when, when I looked at this. Without seeing substantial changes and reading the review comments from town staff and, and, and the, the comments in the, in the packet, I wasn't quite sure. But I, I do want to hear from uh, David. David, what do you think? Yeah, I think we should uh, allow the <coughs> request. And I think this is certainly a very nice community. It's uh, well kept up. Uh, the, the whole project looked very good, and I, I think it will probably continue that way, and I don't see why they should have to go back to square one. John? I'm not sure where going back to square one is going to take the planning board. Okay. Mark, what do you think? Yeah. Okay, you yeah. No, I, okay. again, I, I think we're set a dangerous precedent here to, uh, mm -hmm. to just say that what's in the ordinance doesn't apply. Right. I think the uh, discussion with precedence is, again, it, I just see it not more project specific. Uh, in this case, without substantial changes, and that, that's what made the difference when, it, when I reviewed the information uh, <coughs> earlier this week. But, yeah. but there's almost half of the people sitting here weren't here mm -hmm. when we went through all of that. And the the, the precedent the board has set along the way with, with these kinds of uh, major subdivision site plans is that we do all the work in that sketch plan preliminary mm -hmm. phase and this is just dotting the I's and crossing the T's and so from one side you could say well that's all we have to do tonight but for half the people that are going to vote on that they missed all of that mm -hmm. upfront time. They didn't get to participate and ask their questions and, and raise their issues during that time. Mm -hmm. And they're just, I guess, presuming based upon the, the, the documents in front of them that it all must have been okay. Mm -hmm. I'd like to hear from the more board members then. All right, I'll give you my opinion. Um, yeah. I, 
you know, it, it seems as if this is going to be what they what they had presented <coughs> in the first place. And unless there's some drastic change in the space itself, I I, I feel comfortable. I, I hear the precedence issue though, and that's um. Mm -hmm. That's tough, but I think this is, a, I'm hoping, a somewhat unique experience in that, you know, there was a, a financial issue here, a financial crisis, essentially, that affected a lot of people, and the timing was poor, and, you know, you can't predict those things. Mm -hmm. So I, I would, I probably would vote in favor. You think, John? Uh, 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 yeah, Mike. Mike or As you say, I wasn't here before, but I, I was in active participant in a way I followed the process going on and I mm -hmm. trust the board's prior board's decision to act in our community's best interests. So I would probably vote in favor of it unless other things are presented. Very good. Mr. Hamilton, could you respond to you had mentioned you had some comments in response to Mark? Well, I, I, have, I have great respect for Mr. Kittredge's view. I had um, a project um, that has never come back um, that uh, was part of his board's review, and he was very fair, uh, judicious, but uh, thorough in the review of that project. So um, I respect his views, and I, I don't want to disagree for the sake of being um, disagreeable. Uh, instead, of what I would suggest is that um, I think the board as a whole has walked through some considerations that I think um, balance on the other side, and um, I think it's a matter of uh, respecting a uh, difference of opinion. Our view is that there's really nothing we could have done about circumstances that were wholly beyond our control. And this isn't the first time in this region I've been in a circumstance with a developer. Um, you need approvals, you need a good design, but you also need the market with you. and. For many years, the market wasn't with us, and so there was little that we, as the original applicant, can do. I think there'll be a greater level of comfort um, <coughs> with the presentation uh, when you see the level of focus and detail that Paul has brought to this project. And so, I really want to defer to the board's deliberative process on this question, but also suggest that some of the uh, concerns that you know, a legitimate process question that, that Mark has raised. I think those will be addressed as we move forward. So I'm going to defer to the board's deliberations and decision on this mm -hmm. first question, and then we'll come back. Good. Uh, just for the board's uh, perspective, Evan, uh, I've always liked to, you know, since I've been on the board, uh, you know, trying to be consistent. Uh, we've had several things, you know, requiring sidewalks, those kinds of discussions where we would just try to be uh, fair to all applicants before us. But the issue of precedence, I, I don't, that one, I'd, I'd like to have a little bit more, uh, I guess, guidance or I input think from uh, Yeah, and it's a really important question, of course. And, um, uh, but the standard is, is there <coughs> hardship, an unnecessary hardship, that would, or an extraordinary hardship that would result if you didn't uh, extend it, or were there special circumstances? And those special circumstances in and of themselves um, uh, kind of shield you from the assertion of that precedent. If the same special circumstances came up, you might want to do the exact the same thing, but if you know, these particular, the processions, for example, don't come along all the time. Um, as opposed to a request that we just didn't get around to it, or we just forgot about it, or um, we couldn't decide exactly what we wanted to do in the end, or something like that. Those are not special circumstances or hardship situations. And so you would not be setting any precedent in, in that sense. The hurdle, you know, is still there. So I, um, I think you look at it in each case and see if there is that special circumstance or that hardship um, in it, in that case. Yes, other, other comments, questions we from the attorney? Uh, any changes of opinion or? All right, uh, I, I think we, um, can probably proceed with with a motion on this, anyways. Uh, if you've all had a chance to comment, 
Can I have a motion? Don't be shy. Okay. Uh, I move we retroactively extend the deadline for submitting phase two final subdivision application. Um, okay. Do you need more than that for the retroactive? I think we probably have to have a date uh, to, to be proposed today. To today, yeah. And today is November 18, 2015. Mm -hmm. That about covered it. We do have a motion. Uh, could I have a second? Second. second. Very good. Uh, further discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Very good. Moving on. Uh, request number two. Uh, we have approved the extension of the deadline. Uh, next up, could you step up and tell us what you propose? Sure. Thank you. I'm Paul Brody with WBRC. Um, what I've tried to do is put together a, a fairly concise slideshow here that'll kind of walk us through the process. Some of it we've already walked through, so I hope to go through waiver requests, a little bit of a summary of where the permitting has been. Evan and folks have kind of done that already, so maybe we can kind of skip through that. Um, I have the engineer review, the town engineer's review comments and our responses if, if you'd like to hear those. Um, if not, we can pass by that. Uh, and then it gets into kind of the plans, the current conditions, what's out there on the ground now, um, where are the units that were previously permitted in the last round, and in some instances before the last round, um, and then go from that to a full build overview that shows the extent of the open space that Evan referred to um, and the extent of the units that could be built at some point um, along with all the units and, and, and facilities that are there on site now. Uh, and then I've got a detailed blow up of the phase two area, uh, the Chestnut Court extension, if you will, um, and then a shot of the building character. 